an epic battle. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. To the church, the body of Christ. The State of Affairs We have witnessed an unprecedented amount of evil and wickedness unleashed in America since January 2020. Government unlawfully mandating vaccines, shutting down businesses, election corruption, the censorship on social media, shutting down any voice going against the narrative being pushed by the Biden administration or the CDC, putting people in prison without due process of law for exercising their rights on January 6th, riots and crime going unpunished by the district attorneys across the nation. What is the source behind it all? The kingdom of darkness. Dominion. All authority is delegated. It originated with God the Father. God gave dominion, which means rule, tread down, dominate, of the earth to mankind, mankind being human beings. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So it's important to notice that the dominion was given over all the earth to mankind, or human beings only, and no one else. When mankind disobeyed God's commandment and yielded to Satan, also called the accuser, he became the God, little g, prince of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Common Enemy In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All of humanity has one common enemy, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness. Wrestle is where each person attempts by physical strength to throw the other. The victor is able to hold his opponent down with his hand upon his neck. It is not people we are wrestling with, but with spiritual wickedness operating through them. Principalities is the first place or principality rule or the magistry of angels and demons. That's what principalities means. Powers or exousia is the power of authority or influence and of right privilege, the power of rule or government, the power of him whose will and commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed. It also means of authority to manage domestic affairs. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, the authority to manage domestic affairs. Rulers is the Lord of the world or prince of this age. It is the devil and his demons. Our battle is not with the individual, but with the spiritual force working through them. Of darkness. It means persons in whom darkness becomes visible and holds sway. When someone is acting in opposition to God's ways and laws, violence, murder, homosexuality, transgenderism, witchcraft, lying, stealing, etc., Jesus has the superior authority. In Luke chapter 4, verse 36, it says, And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. See, the people were all amazed because Jesus would just speak the word, give a command, and the unclean spirits, the demons, would come out. There was no physical force. It was just with his spoken word. Why? Because the unclean spirits recognized he had authority over them. Authority was delegated in Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. 
when power is delegated it is done so with the intention that the one receiving it will use it according to the will of the one delegating it the authority is to be exercised to get certain tasks accomplished the sacrifice jesus came to the earth in human form he died for our sins for the disobedience becoming the sacrificial lamb necessary for the atonement of our sins when he died and was buried he descended into hell and stripped the principalities of their authority when he rose again he told his disciples that all power in heaven and earth has been given unto him the win in matthew twenty eight verses eighteen through nineteen it says and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power which is authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost go ye in greek is pario which means to lead over carry over or to transfer transfer people from the oppression of the kingdom of darkness which is death and into the kingdom of light, which is life. Taking back the authority, God gave dominion, authority, to mankind, human beings on the earth. God does not go back on his word, even though we submitted the authority to Satan by yielding to him. The authority was ours, and we gave it away. The law required a human being, without sin, to gain it back. God does not go against his word or law. They must be fulfilled. In Psalm chapter 89, verse 34, it says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the things gone out of my lips. When Jesus paid the price for our sins by becoming the sacrificial offering as a human being, it stripped the authority from the kingdom of darkness by law. Jesus then regained that authority on the earth as a human being by law. He already had the authority in the spiritual realm. He then delegated authority to his believers to accomplish certain tasks on earth for him. Treading in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus is speaking and he says, Behold, I give unto you power, which means authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So he's telling his believers, the followers of Jesus Christ, that he has the authority. He has given the authority to them to tread on serpents and scorpions, which is referring to demons, unclean spirits, or bad angels. And that we as believers have power, authority over all the power of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So the New Testament is written in Greek, and the Greek word that was translated into be able is dunamai, and it means to be able, have power, whether by virtue of one's own ability and resources, or of a state of mind, or through favorable circumstances, or by permission of law, which is exactly what Jesus did by law. He did it by permission of law. Withstand and stand. Withstand was translated from the Greek word ansteme, which means to set oneself against, to withstand, resist, oppose. So withstand means to push back with force. The word that was translated as to stand came from the Greek word esteme, and it means to make firm, fix, establish to cause a person or thing to keep his or its place. In other words, maintain your ground. To establish a thing, cause it to stand. To uphold or sustain the authority or force of anything. So you want to maintain what you have, gain back ground, do not give up any ground. Spiritual authority. Jesus told us that he had authority over all things, whether in heaven or on the earth. He then delegated that authority to his followers and told them to sustain that authority and to use it to oppose the works of the kingdom of darkness, spiritual forces working through people who opposes God's word and his ways. It is the believer's responsibility here on earth to make sure God's laws and ways are enacted by actively opposing the evil spiritual forces using our granted spiritual authority and power over them. 
Jesus didn't say for us to pray to God and for God to deal with it. He told us to deal with it and delegated the power and authority to do it. Instead, we have been praying for him to deal with it. In James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It doesn't say he'll flee from God. It says if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. We are the church. In Mark chapter 13, verses 34, it says, For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Believers in Jesus are his servants. We're also known as the church. We were given authority to rule over the kingdom of darkness, to oppose and subdue it here on earth. He assigned the job to his followers. The head and the body. God stated that all things were put under the feet of Jesus and that he is the head of the church. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 through 23, it says, And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church, the individual believers, are referred to as his body. The head and the body are one. The body executes the will of the head. The head does not operate without the body. Jesus operates through his body of believers on earth. If you think about your own body, your head and your body are connected. And if there's something you desire, let's say you want to eat a cookie, you have that thought in your head. Well, your head doesn't get the cookie. Your body is the one that gets the cookies. But your head is the one that thinks it, but it's executed through your body. And that's what we are. We are Jesus's body. We are to execute his will here on earth. Agreement. Spiritual beings, demons and unclean spirits, or the Holy Spirit, work through human beings on earth to either bring about evil or good. God gave dominion to human beings on earth, therefore actions must be done through them. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. People can be influenced to either do good or bad. We must come into agreement with it before we take actions. If you purposely hit somebody, you did so by way of agreement, or you would not have done it. If you bought someone a cup of coffee, you did so by agreeing with the thoughts and taking action. Action reflects agreement when done by your own free will. Being strong. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Notice it says, hath blessed us. That's past tense. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It didn't say be strong in us or in our own power. It says to be strong in the Lord and in his might. John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the he that he's referring to is the Holy Spirit. And the he that's in the world is referring to Satan and unclean spirits. Our adversary. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8-9, through 9, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. An adversary is an opponent or enemy. And notice it says, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for someone that he can devour. Tools of the Devil we need to realize that there are spiritual forces working through people by way of influence. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil wants to destroy humanity. He will use devices to get you to destroy yourself by way of unhealthy lifestyle choices, addictions such as alcohol, drugs, tobacco, prescription abuse, overeating, etc. Demons use anger, impatience, and pride or ego to get people to cause harm to one another. 
Examples would be wars, fighting, domestic violence, road rage. Evil spirits will influence people to bring harm to someone, and then the one harmed will often go and harm others. The end goal is destruction. The victory. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, Who hath delivered us from the power, authority, of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. In Colossians 2, verse 15, And having spoiled, which means disarmed, principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 through 21, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and sat him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 through 6, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, which means made alive, together with Christ, by grace you are saved and hath, which is past tense, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that's portraying that we are with Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father from a place far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. Summation. Our enemy is an unseen one. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with unseen evil forces working through people to bring harm and destruction to us all. We have the right to scold, correct, and stop demonic activities in our lives. Becoming aware of this and knowing that you have all spiritual authority over the evil spirits brings empowerment to you, your prayers, and actions. When you take action in the physical realm, realize that you must deal with the spiritual realm as well. We have been delegated authority to manage the affairs of God as believers in Jesus Christ. Authority must be utilized or it will sit dormant and not bring about results God intended for us. God gave believers authority to tread over all the power of the enemy. The victory is ours. We just need to enforce it. I would like to tell you about Yeshaya's herbals. Herbals are God's medicine to bring about healing for various ailments and diseases. Herbals are natural, organic, and effective. In Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12 in the Bible it says the leaf thereof is for medicine. And in Revelation 22, verse 2, And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Yeshaya is a doctor in naturopathy, a certified Lyme specialist. She does herbal healing. She is an iridologist, regenerative detox specialist. She has many products, including uh, products for neuropathy, healthy heart. She has herbal iron, which is very good for giving you alertness and also uh, energy. Uh, she has products for cholesterol problems, allergies, lung blend, parasite cleanse, blood pressure, detox, energy, overall health, and much more. Um, I suggest that you go to her website at yeshiaherbalspma.com. Look at all her products. Place an order. You get to get free shipping on your first order. You can type in the code Truth Tornado. So I, I highly recommend her products, and I please ask that you go to her website and check it out. And thank you for listening to this. I ask that you click the check and share this with others and leave a comment. Thank you.